Hello everyone, today we have new video review and this time we are going to check fresh release from Special Hobby as you can see here and uh, this model is molded in 170 second scale and it copies short Sunderland MK5 so this particular edition is named as a fighting commies in Europe and the Far East and here on this nice box art you can see this aircraft so box is surprisingly huge for this scale I would say here you can see comparison with my hand, as you can see it is barely uh, fitting into the frame of the video. Nevertheless, uh, this should be quite an interesting build because you will be able to copy this aircraft. So, we have here a commercial sample, it means you get exactly the same kit if you order it from official special hobby website. And we are going to check it closer. First of all, I would like to show you that on the side as usual we have some information about the kit. And then on the other side we have some safety devices. So that's a top opening box. Just give me a second to open it. And here is what we have inside. So as you can see there are several plastic bags. And then we also have decal sheet on the bottom and assembly manual on the top. So we will check them one by one obviously. And of course assembly manual will be the last one. I would like to start with this. So these are first, um, this is a first set of plastic frames. Let's open them and take a look. So straight away you can notice that size of the finished model should be quite huge. And it is expectable I would say. If you know the real sizes, I mean dimensions of the real aircraft, then it won't be surprising for you. <clears throat> so here we have first plastic sprue would say. Uh, those are two fuselage house. We have them molded without tail segment here as you can see. Of course all clear parts are also separate and external detailing is uh, typical. Recess panel lines. Inside we will check it a bit. Okay let's do it now. So inside we have also some interior detailing and as far as you can see there are no guiding elements so you have to be careful while joining all this stuff together. But now we are going to do the zoom mode so that you can check all those parts closer. Let's focus the camera and let's go. It is a bit surprising that there is such generous detailing inside. I wonder how it will be possible to show actually what is hidden inside. And now we are going to move to the next set of plastic frames. These are basically identical frames because here we get the wing parts and we also get the tail wings as well. Of course we will check only one because there is no point in uh, taking a look at the same parts twice. So here you can notice that the I'm not sure if it's top half, I guess that's the top half. It has this large bars which should um, add some rigidity to the wings because otherwise it will be really tricky to install this in place. Then also another interesting thing is that we have to glue the uh, tail wings 
from two parts and also tail section is also glued from two parts so be ready for this and of course external detailing is typical we have recessed panel lines ailerons and flaps are pre-molded so you won't be able to drop them and the engine gondolas are molded separately now we are going to do the zoom mode once again so that you can appreciate the molding quality of this model let's go As you might have noticed, there are no guiding elements as well, so be ready for this. It won't be a beginner's build, I would say, so you have to be ready for such surprise. Here we have second plastic bag, again another set of plastic frames, so we are going to open it. As you can see, that's a reopenable plastic bag, which is also quite cool. And here we have another set of plastic frames. So first of all we get here this frame with various fuselage sections. Let's zoom in a bit so that you can see them closer. Again molding quality is on the same level. External detailing is also featuring recess panel lines and maybe even riveting in some places. I think I saw it somewhere. And now we are going to do the zoom mode so that you can see it with your own eyes. You can see that some panels had some uh, minor, I would say, interior detailing. It might come handy for um, interior detailing, obviously. And next we have another thing which will be placed inside the aircraft. These are two frames with engine parts. Of course, I will show you only one because they carry absolutely similar parts. Let's focus the camera so that now you can see those parts in detail. So on this part, as you can see, we have all necessary engine parts. Uh, wiring, as far as you can see, it is not included, so you can copy it with your own tools. But even just like this, it is really cool to have um, engines included out of the box, because not that many manufacturers include this even in bigger scales, not to mention the 172nd scale. So that's a definite advantage. 
we go on with another sprue this one is uh, completely dedicated to interior parts as you can see we have here four for the cockpit walls and other elements and again once you combine them and install into the airplane uh, you will have to think on how to open the or display all this stuff because I'm still not sure on how it will be visible on the finished aircraft so let's do the zoom mode Even though we have here some thin parts, they are carefully molded, I didn't find any flesh on them, so this is a good thing to know. And here we have another, I would say the last plastic sprue from the second bag. So here we have four propellers, we also have the engine gondolas parts, and note that attachment points on the propellers, they are placed right on the blades, so you have to be uh, ready to carefully cut them off. Frontal sections of the engine gondolas are also molded separately, so you won't have seams in such visible areas. That's really cool. And now we are going to zoom in once again and check everything closer. Let's go. These parts, which are divided into several houses, they don't have any guiding elements inside and that might be a tricky stuff for some modelers. And of course you have to deal with it, because otherwise it will be tricky to get a nice finish. Here we have third and the last plastic bag with various sprues. I'm going to open it as well. Uh, so, as you can see, clear sprue comes in its separate plastic bag. That's really good. So you won't have any scratches on this frame and just give me a second to open it. Let's remove it out of the bag and take a closer look. Here as you can guess we have all necessary canopy parts, also we have these uh, windows which are molded as a clear part, so that's really cool. Some might say that it will be a tedious process, it is right. I do agree with this, but um, it is noticeably better than just uh, simple decals it's, uh, instead of windows, I would say. Now let's zoom in and do the zoom mode.
Of course, there are no masks included, so you have to deal with your own hands. But I would say it's not surprising because usually special hobby kits do not include such uh, bonus. I'm looking at the second plastic sprue from the third plastic bag. Here we have a lot of small parts. Why I'm a bit confused because we have also ending gear wheels. And this, I guess, will have to be used for the aircraft as well. Here we have antenna parts. And now we are going to do the zoom mode once again so that you will see all those parts closer. Let's go. Surprisingly, in wheel parts, we get the guiding pins. That's a uh, quite interesting approach to the parts design, I would say, because in the big uh, Fizzowich halves, we didn't have any guiding elements, but here we do have um, those. Then, next one is a small sprue. I will show it like this. So here, as you can see, we have various elements for internal detailing. We will have to check the assembly manual in order to understand how they will be used. Next one is another sprue concerned with interior detailing. Let's refocus the camera and zoom in a bit. So here we have various bombs. We also have another interior floor panel. This one I guess will be also a floor panel. Here we have pilot seats and also do special attachments for the bombs. Now let's do the zoom so that you can see all this stuff closer. And again, we had the guiding pins in wheels, but we do not have them in bombs, even though bombs should be glued out of two halves as well. That's really surprising. And one more plastic sprue. I'm not sure if it is similar to what we saw before. Just give me a second. I have to check it. No, it is not. Even though here we have winding gear wheels as well. But as you can see, we also have various external parts, uh, cockpit parts, the steering wheels, etc, etc. So let's zoom in once again and...
Okay, so that was the last gray plastic sprue. And next we have the plastic bag with resin parts. Uh, so there is only one resin part. I will show it like this. I guess there is no need to remove it out of the plastic bag. Let's just focus the camera. I'm trying to move this focus bar so that you can see it in detail. So here it is. One piece resin part. I'm not sure what it copies. But as you can see only one resin part. That's really surprising for such huge model because I would have expected more I would say. Well, we have what we have as some say. Next there is a big decal sheet and also small P thread and again with P thread it's another surprise because as you can see it's really tiny and it won't help you with cockpit on this aircraft. I guess you will have to find uh, some aftermarket upgrades in order to get your cockpit improved. Next we have the decal sheet as I said. Here we have all necessary symbols for several marking options. Decals are printed in cartograph and I also see here decals for the dashboard. Unfortunately no decals for the seat belts, but we have at least some for the identification lights. And printing quality is really good. We can do the zoom in so that you can see them in detail. Let's do the zoom mode. So you can see that authors fitted here all necessary symbols and you just use them from single uh, sheet of decals. Next we have assembly manual. <clears throat> this one is printed in form of this large brochure. We have short history note in English and Czech. Also some technical specifications for the real aircraft. And next is a parts map. Note that those panels which we saw molded separately, they won't be used in this build. Here you can see another cross as well. Next we have also a lot of parts not used on this interior sprue as you remember. Uh, wheels will be used, that's really surprising. On the clear sprue a lot of parts will stay too. And here we have paints chart. And assembly process starts with cockpit obviously. So we assembled the floor, we also assembled the seats, the control cone. Then we install everything together onto the floor. And we continue with interior of this aircraft, the bomb bay, as far as I can guess. And then we continue by joining these two uh, fours together. And then I guess it will be installed into the fuselage. So let's move on. Here you can see that um, this sub-assembly is being inserted into the fuselage half. Here we have the tail four, let's say. Then we continue with various sections of the interior which are assembled from several parts obviously. Then we join fuselage halves together and note that you have to choose if you would like to have an open position of the door. I guess you will have to choose such option because otherwise it will be a pity to hide such interior in a closed doors because it will be barely visible through all those transparent parts. As I said before the rudder and also the tail fin is assembled out of two halves. The same goes for the tail wings and wings. Here we have the short note that use parts to place the deployed bomb racks under the wings and use parts J3 with the bomb racks retracted in position. So it will be up to you which one you choose. Here we install the engines. As you remember engines can be detailed a bit more. Um, I think aftermarket manufacturers will try to tackle it. So if you 
would like to use P parts, just wait a bit and I think there will be an upgrade set for this. Um, next we continue with landing gear system. <clears throat> and note that you have to do, you will have to add wires on the wings. So we should be ready for this. Here we install various antennas. And as you remember this resin part, quite nice one. And here, here is the resin part. And it's under the question mark, so it will be up to you if you would like to use it. In total, there are 76 steps in order to get your Sunderland ready to be 